to Assistant Secretary Destro, <laughs> Bob, and uh, thank our esteemed guests uh, for inviting me to participate in this uh, important discussion uh, this morning. We're living in an exciting moment for the Americas. The vast majority of countries in the region have transformed themselves into peaceful, vibrant democracies. And the United States is engaged in favor of democracy and freedom and against authoritarian regimes consistently. We've partnered with many like-minded countries to build democratic institutions, support healthy civil society, and promote free press. These efforts are fully consistent with the Inter-American Democratic Charter, which marks its 19th anniversary this week on September 11. Now, unfortunately, in this democratic hemisphere, this hemisphere of freedom, we have three outliers, Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Cuba, who insist on authoritarian models. The U.S. strongly supports the Nicaraguan people's uh, call for democratic reform and free and fair elections. We believe the Nicaraguan people, not Ortega and Murillo, should decide the future of the country. As the opposition fights for democratic freedom and civil liberties, the U.S. government encourages diverse opposition groups to cooperate more effectively. We support the right of citizens to organize and gather peacefully. We support an independent free press. We've said loudly and clearly to the Ortega regime, the repression must stop and the conditions must be created in which free and fair elections can go forward, which I think were uh, beautifully lined out by the Secretary General. To date, the United States has sanctioned 22 Nicaraguan individuals, including the Vice President and three Ortega children, as well as eight entities, for their roles in serious human rights abuses, undermining democracy or corruption. We revoked the visas of numerous individuals involved in the repression of uh, peaceful protests. Our policy toward Nicaragua has bipartisan support in our Congress, and the United States will not be satisfied until the rights of all Nicaraguans are fully respected. The Ortega Murillo regime will be held accountable for its actions and inactions. And I would interject here that for, uh, as the Secretary General said, they may think they're buying time waiting for our elections, but I get phone calls and emails every day from liberal Democrats who used to be fairly sympathetic to the Sandinista project in Nicaragua, who are beating up on us for not putting enough pressure on them. So uh, this is something they ought to take into account, that uh, this is not an issue where they can uh, expect a lot of uh, change in American policy. Now, the United States is not alone in working for accountability. The, uh, the Ortegas are isolating themselves from the international community and world markets with their repressive actions. During the past year, Canada, the European Union, the United Kingdom announced their own sanctions against corrupt actors in Nicaragua. They, like us, recognize the regime's repression. Like us, they understand the urgency to shine a spotlight on the atrocious behavior and take action in support of freedom and civil liberties. We thank our partners at the OAS and Secretary General Almagro personally for their continued engagement. The OAS High-Level Commission on Nicaragua's uh, uh, November uh, 2019 report highlighted the struggle of the regime's victim and their fight for peace and basic security. We believe the Commission's important findings warrant action and follow-up. We also value the report which the Secretary General presented to the OAS Permanent Council earlier this summer on the working and condition in Nicaragua. As a consequence, several OAS member states, including the United States, support a draft resolution which would be presented at the October uh, General Assembly to address the human rights situation in Nicaragua and lay down key markers for next year's electoral process. Uh, likewise, we thank uh, Manuel Orozco and Aimel Rios for playing key roles in fostering discussion and debate. The United States recognizes the value of a robust uh, civil society and the free flow of ideas. As we look towards Nicaragua's 2021 election, we know time is of the essence. The ultimate resolution of the crisis lies with Nicaraguans. But here is the key point. For a fair democratic process to occur next year, the essential conditions for free and fair elections need to be put in place this year. Ortega and Murillo need to face up to this. So far, only certain individuals and institutions have been sanctioned, but not, that does not mean the others are immune. 
Ortega and Maria's choice is between moving now to establish conditions for free and fair elections or facing a massive increase in pressure from the international community. Returning to the status quo before the April 2018 protests or even maintaining the current status quo is not an option for them. And this is something we hope they understand very, very clearly indeed. So with that, I thank you for engaging in this important uh, discussion. Uh, it's been very helpful to me in crystallizing some ideas. And I return the floor to uh, Assistant Secretary Destro. Thank you all again.